test, test, test. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody here today to uh, the presentation. Uh, this will be given by Jerome Horowitz. It's, uh, Jerome comes to us with 29 plus years of software experience. He is a, senior, a, he is a software engineer. He has a, a Bachelor of Science from Weber State in Physics, and he has his Master of Science in Computer Science from BYU. He has worked extensively in the graphics industry and, uh, and many other areas. Uh, today he's going to be talking about his experiences in the publishing industry using open source software. Um, and we'd also like to thank our sponsor, who is X Missions. So if you can, you know, check out their stuff, wing some business their way as well. Um, Jerome? today about, to mention my ex experience of publishing with open source and so software. Uh, specifically, this is about a, a typesetting a, a book that we had recently. Now, we've had some experience doing books. Uh, you mentioned I had, you know, put my uh, middle initial in there. My father's Jerome Horowitz. If you Google, he's um, an author of Constitution books and other er um, topics um, that have sold quite a bit. And he, so anyway, so we're, in this case, I'm talking about a little bit different project. Usually, on most of the books, the publisher takes care of typesetting the book and preparing it for publication and doing all that kind of, of work and getting ready to go. In this particular situation we're talking about today, uh, we had a manuscript that my mother had done, and she had typed this, this manuscript, over 100, about 150 some odd pages or more, and she had, had some pictures for it. It was a, a family, a personal history that she'd done for the family, and it was in word perfect, and she had miscellaneous images to go with it, and we thought, well, we ought to uh, print this, and we ought to make it look, try and, and do something reasonably uh, professional, and so in the process of doing that, we ended up trying, working with different open source uh, packages and working with that. So I wanted to talk about the experience that we had doing that and preparing the uh, book for publication, some observations that I noted about open source, and also some familiar with the tools uh, that we ended up using. Uh, there are a lot of options in open source that you can, uh, that you can use, and these aren't certainly the, the only ones to do, but you know, these are the ones that we happen to pick, and I think they worked out well. Now, what, the reason I proposed this presentation when the conference came up was, as I mentioned, I was do, had just done that uh, book. We were, we were just we were working on, on this book. And I previously, uh, as, I, as I mentioned in the bio, I'd been doing this for, you know, co getting close to 30 years, 27 odd years. And about back in the 1980s, I had worked with these tools as well, and briefly, and I hadn't really done it very much since then. And kind of going back to it, I noticed that it was a lot different experience now than it was many years ago. And I thought that would, would be kind of comparing the two uh, experiences at a different time, the, the, the much more extensive uh, community support that we have available now, and uh, as this community has grown, that it's, it's made a huge difference, and I just wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit along with the tools themselves. Now, let's, see, let's talk a bit, a bit about tech and uh, LaTeX. Earlier, when I first started, it was, it was most people were pronouncing it LaTeX, La but lately I noticed people have been saying more LaTeX, so I've kind of shifted to that. I've, I've heard several different ways of doing it. This, is, this was kind of a classic open source uh, sort of a pro project initially, back before it, most people had even heard, were commonly hearing about open source. Originally, it got tech itself got started when Donald Knuth, as they were shifting from publishing books by hand, not using computers or you know, using the tools that had been used, been developed over over a long period of time, 
as they were shifting from that to, to doing it with by computer, uh, he would get his the books would come back and and um, he was doing he would do math went over math text fundamental algorithms is one that you'd see anyway so Donald Cruz got his books back and he was very disappointed with the quality of the books he was getting back the quality of the, of the typesetting that the newer computer tools were producing and so that there's got to be a better way to do this and so he started uh, development of tech uh, around 1977 and that that developed and he. He provided under a license where it was, uh, you, would, you could have get the code and people would make the base commercial products on it, kind of like a, a BSD license is currently. And then later on, Leslie Lamport decided to try to make some standard uh, macros for producing books, uh, starting about 1982 for a few years. He never did do the book he was planning to do, as far as I know, but um, it did result in some standard uh, macro packages that could be used with. Uh, tech to be able to to set uh, set type and produce um, materials. Okay, so I want to kind of co compare the, the the tools. Now, back in the '80s, so this was the tools were, were newer, and like I said, the, the, the community was not nearly as well as, as accessible as it is now. Um, Late uh, tech worked really well, but it wasn't always the easiest thing to do. And now, well, it still works well, but it's not always the easiest. Um, item to do. When we were rehearsing, my daughter asked, well, if it's not always the easiest thing to do, why did you use it? And that, that's actually an excellent question. And I had kind of a, kind of a longer answer, answer back and, and forth on it. Um, and the, the, the answer really is that, it, it, that the, doing a book is not the easiest thing to do. Trying to, trying to set type, you can, you, can, you can just kick something out easily, but Sometimes it's, it takes some, some doing to make it to make it work. And one of the weak, one thing that really struck me after I answered the question I didn't put my answer last night was that what, as I was working on this, so one weekend I was working on the, the book in LaTeX, and then the next week I had to do some publishing work in uh, Microsoft Word. And when I was working on Microsoft Word, I was thinking, you know, this is a, was a lot easier working with, the, a lot more pleasant working with the LaTeX, because at least you could, you could with, the, with the tech, you can see what it's doing, and you're not trying to guess, well, where in the world did that come from, or what's it got in that, in that file? So it, I think it's been a good tool. Anyway, so in the 80s, it seemed it was hard to sometimes find solutions for problems. And now there have been lots of examples on the web. There's been a lot of uh, material that you can, you can find that way. Um, back early on, uh, there was a lot of uh, suggestion that you work with your commercial vendors and try to get support from them. And now there's been, in addition to, to vendors, in addition to people doing consulting, there's also been uh, a lot of community-produced books. There's a wiki book on the, on the topic as well as uh, an ecosystem developed with, uh, okay. So tools have developed, and also beyond that, as the open source community has kind of, take, kind of gone with this, these tools, there have been a lot of uh, different projects and tools that have developed, and also they've, the different parts of the tool chain that, that do uh, different parts of the production of the documents have had independent projects that have produced uh, different um, independent implementations of it. If someone says, well, I like something a little different, they can, can do that. Okay, so let's talk a bit about uh, some of the benefits that, that I saw. Now, I assume everyone's familiar with uh, markup and that sort of the idea, like HTML now, it, for a while everything went WYSIWYG and so it wasn't as popular. So this is a markup system. I assume everyone, hopefully every people were aware of that. You, where you t we're gonna look at some source here in a minute. But, so you, you type the, the code, the documents you're working on in one format and then it's, it's converted to another. And a lot of it came from that. So, so you have the, the input that you're producing, the markup document, and then you get the an output, a PDF or, or some other uh, document format. And this has some, some advantages we found with it. One is you don't have to, to give out you know, the, the final format like these slides were produced with the tools. Um, you don't have to, to, to ship all of the doc, document. It's, it's the, the slides are kind of fixed. It's, it's kind of more of a publishing format. You're not, it's not like a, a Word document or something that way. You have somebody changing it after it's, after it's out. And also, you can produce multiple outputs from, from different uh, sources. So some people have actually used 
uh, produced like this one set of files that they can rearrange and produce different documents. Uh, one that worked really was really helpful that uh, for this particular project was the the GIS draft mode. You can tell it in LaTeX. Well, this the the book of course had lots of pictures in it, and it was impractical to, to like email the result. But if you flip it into draft, if you put draft mode, it'll kick out a, a version that has just boxes, just a box where the picture is going to be. And that's a very, that makes a very compact file. You can easily email to someone if you're, if you're trying to collaborate and uh, make the document work out. One kind of interesting advantage, though, that, that also came out was that the macros in, in LaTeX, that are like the commands that tell it what to format, are text strings in, in, in ASCII. And so since they're words, they're really easy to do searches on. Some of the other markups, they say, well, we use symbols, and so that doesn't confuse the spell checker, which is, is kind of managed that way, but it's really hard to do a search on, on other ones. And it's even, in, a, in a WYSIWYG tool, it's even harder, where you have to try to, to figure out what someone used to describe what, a, what an image looks like. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of material from the community that people have worked on to make it to help with uh, people get going. And one, one that worked, it was kind of interesting, this has always been kind of an academic project. So people would publish uh, papers on what they were doing and how their tools were, how the tools they were, were, were including in the uh, packages worked. But one thing that's been really helpful over the year, but was really helpful for, for me, was that a lot of times people who, who weren't as advanced as the person who, who wrote the, the package would write an example or they, they'd you know, write something that, that wasn't quite as, as detailed that you could still work with. Can you where the registration is? It's just down the hall. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, continue. Um, okay, so the format commands. Okay, so as I mentioned, the four commands, uh, you can support it. Also, since it's a text based markup, you can use um, uh, a lot of the tools that are used for programming and for other kinds of development for them. And so that's, that's a, uh, a big advantage. So you can, source control works really well with it. And uh, especially you've got some good common slides. We use both, use both documents and you get uh, slides out of the same package. So, for example, these, these slides are also uh, produced. We look at the source for both of them. So you can use one set of tools and you can use the knowledge from both to, um, to get the the knowledge transfers. One, one other thing that's been really interesting, if you look in the documentation for these, is that the, a lot of people who write it, they'll, they'll include a lot of information about uh, conventions from publishing, and this worked well, and this formatting worked well, rather than just, well, if you, you need this, you need to, to do this to make something happen, and that's been a, I think it's been a, been a big help, uh, kind of the conventions from, from years and years of working on documents. It's been, it's worked out. Okay, before we do it, one other, oh, as I mentioned, a lot of it, before going to talking about the documents itself, I wanted to talk about free formats a little bit, uh, free fonts a little bit. Because um, I said, one of the other things I really wanted to, to cover in the um, purpose of the presentation was to kind of talk about the community a little bit as well. And that was, a few years ago, there was a, a news article I saw, it's, it's probably very obscure, but for a book called T-Line for Journalists. And this book had been produced, you may never have heard of T-Line. T-Line is, is a shorthand system that's used in the UK a lot. And um, in, the, in, in the British Isles, the UK, and the Commonwealth, they, people have to pass a shorthand test to become a journalist. And they get 100 words a minute. And these guys developed, so there, years ago, uh, somebody developed this system called T-Line that let people, uh, that, it was a very kind of an easy shorthand. He'd been a shorthand teacher, he taught Pittman, and he found, you know, people spent years trying to learn shorthand and didn't learn it very well and didn't have much to show for it. And so he developed this, so somebody developed the streamline system, and then later, the shorthand teacher found a way to streamline it even more, and she wrote a book, the title T-Line for Journalists, that she, uh, that they were going to publish. But when they went to publish it, they discovered that the publisher of the regular books owned the rights to the shapes of the characters in T-Line, which is kind of a feature of, of British maybe just a feature of British law, but they, uh, so they say, well, you know, you can't print, you can't publish a book about T-Line without our permission. And so they finally did work it out, and the book was, was published some years later. 
But that's, that's kind of an interesting issue in, in open source. Is a lot of times you have issues with rights and things like that. Yes? I apologize for interrupting you for a moment. I think the mic is... Oh. Is that any... Got a red light still. One, two, one. I'm going to go get some for you. All right. Is this one on? Okay. Okay. Let me try it. I didn't remember showing you the room last night. They said I could try this one. Okay. Okay. So this is all. Is this audible? You hear okay? All right. This one was actually kind of tricky to work with. This one, we try. Okay, so hopefully that. It doesn't sound on. Is, is it working? Okay. All right. It just feels like I'm whispering to myself. Okay, so let's let's continue. Okay, so they had this this book they wanted to to, to, to publish. And it was kind of in a, so this, the situation occurred that was very similar to what you see in some of the open source projects where you get some issues about who owns the trademark or who owns whatever. And so sometimes people, they, they ask, well, for open source or for free software, for, for both of them, you know, look at all the hassle I have with licensing. And so the point here is even in, situ in some situations where you don't have computers and you uh, may not have been aware of it, you, you had the same issues before. You just didn't, people just didn't realize it, didn't think about it as much or didn't realize it. So this isn't something that you just suddenly, you may have been aware of it all of a sudden, but it's not something that's brand new. Okay, now, so, so even in the U.S., though, there's still an issue also with fonts. Those, get, those actually get copy, have copyright law, law applied to them as well. And so in the, pro, in the LATEX projects, they've been, a lot of people have been working to, to get uh, fonts that are free, that you can kind of like the, the free software movement, so you can, you can freely use them and distribute them and not have a problem with someone saying, look, your, your book's in a font that's restricted. And, and you can't use it, or you have all these, these rules about using it. But there's been some issue with licensing, and I, I listed some of the some of the licenses that are used. The, the concern is, is you know, normally with with an open source package that, that's under a free well, uh, uh, under the under a free software copy left type license, they say, well, you need to, to, to distribute the source with the uh, document with the, with the package. And they don't really want to necessarily have to have to give a disk to everybody. You give a letter to, you send, you send a letter or something to. So they're trying to, to have some adjustments to kind of balance that off. And that's what those are for. And since this, this slide and parts of the presentation are kind of discussing some legal issues, I want to point out that, that I'm not I'm saying that particular this fund is okay or not or giving legal advice. Okay, so let's look at some actual code here. Um, as an example, this is the um, first part of, this, of the file that produced the slides. And well, will trim down a little, cleaned up a little bit, but it's, it's, it's all the material. So to start out a presentation, so it's, it's a text file, uh, first of all. At the start of a file, you have what's called the preamble. And that's the part from the top uh, particularly the document class that starts it down to where you have the uh, begin that, that starts off the, the rest of the document and actually starts producing text. So the first thing you have is you have document class and then in there you'll have a, a particular class. Now this is Beamer and Beamer is a package that does slides and so that's why we're using it uh, here. And the, so that tells it to just kind of set up to start doing slides. And then these packages bring in different, um, these use package statements, bring in different um, options that they will use to, so you kind of control how the, the document's going to look and, and give it different uh, options for formatting. And those first, those first few are just standard ones that the, the uh, generator uh, that I was using, uh, this was out of on the text max and said I want to do a presentation, it can get started with a presentation, so it kicked out that um, document class, those first few use packages, and some of that. And I had to go back, go in and add, you know, author, title, and date, and then you have the, the start of the, the package. So that, that sets it up for it. 
And then you can also, and then you have that th use a theme which controls kind of the look of the slides. So in the slides, if I wanted, if I put a different package in, the, a different uh, theme in there, in that name, then it will um, it will it'll look different. And actually, pretty me, this is not actually Cambridge anymore. So, uh, so it's changed a little bit since then. But so that you can change the, the look of the slides completely just by changing that value. Also, you can put in the um, put in things for color schemes. So you take the take the same basic um, appearance of the slide and just change the colors if you just if you like the overall layout, but want different uh, colors. Okay. So then beyond that, you can you have to make make slides. So below that for the for slides, you have what they call a frame. So to get the, the title, which is the one that was up on, before we started, you have just begin, begin a frame and end a frame with a make title in the middle. I like to put other text or details that become the, the slide in, in there as well, or for a regular slide. But so that's a, that's a title slide. Uh, for, a, for the outline slide at the top, I think it changed a little bit, but you have to begin the frame and then you have the title up on, on the top. And then, uh, if it's a if you're getting a bulleted list, you can use a package that does that is itemizing, and then you know slash items. So I mentioned in the in the beginning that you have about macros in the in in all the tech languages they use that backslash and then a string to be a macro. I probably should have mentioned that going in. And so uh, so that all that stuff in the in the um, the beginning and then into the slides. These are kind of macros. So since the, since the, the macros are, are all text name, it makes it, it actually makes it very easy to do searches on them and uh, see what and also see where the what the document's doing. Uh, the way all those funny uh, you know the, the, the funny spelling on LaTeX comes from from having those uh, macros as well. Um, so you have a macro that says, oh yeah, you can do that uh, usual printing as well. And now those pauses, that's kind of an interesting feature. Some of the slides, you know, so I, I could kind of skip through and it would gradually show text. So that's the way it does that. You use pauses or you can put codes on the, on the item to show which slides they go into. And so if you want to do a, a successive uh, unveil through, the, um, through, the, through a set of slides, you can do that by putting, the, by putting codes like that. So you don't have to go through and try to keep duplicating the slides and keeping them lined up and worry about where the the values would come. Okay, so that was so that was kind of a couple of examples on making slides. Okay, so now this is the preamble. This is the first part of the preamble for the, for for the book. So once again, we have the document class at the top, and this time we're making a book. So we put book in that out as the as the argument. And in a lot of the macros, but not completely consistently, sometimes I'll have these square bracket section for options. And so here we're saying we're doing a book on that first line, but we're doing it in the, the, the base font size is 12 point. It's going to be a two-sided document, and so that tells it to set up to do the, to do the facing pages differently. And, or, and it's going to be in English. And so and then we can pick up some of these packages. So I mentioned about the, the font uh, packages that we're doing. Um, so that we, we, we picked the font down there a little further, and uh, so then we can go, go down through and pick up some additional things, table of contents in those um, section numbers. So they have some of the table of contents uh, items down here. Probably the pointer shows um, adequately. And then um, here I can kind of control globally, like um, how much to skip between paragraphs or how much to indent. And, and then here they have various packages that do um, different kinds of graphics. So I can insert it. So this is kind of telling the setup. We're going to be doing some images in this part of the file. And so that pulls in the graphics package or the graph figure, which is like a doing images with the text going around it. And, and some of these do, and then some figure lets you do individual pieces, microtype lets it, you can kind of control how it's doing the um, that would go too? It sounded like something. Oh, wait a minute. 
Is this one on? That's it. That on? Two. Is that audible at all? Okay. Actually, let's try. We had a sound person here last night. Is that audible at all? No. That's audible either. Showing over here. I thought he said there might be one in here. Did you have to close off the bottom? Oh, nope. It's double A's. Is that it? That's it. We got some 9 volts in there. I don't know double A's in there. <laughs> Jeez. Wrong format. Wrong format of battery. What do you think? I apologize for this interrupting your presentation. What you could do. Do you want to start recording? Pardon? Do you want to move down to the front and we could try it? Yeah, I just want to do that. I'll see if I can. I just didn't get it. Yeah, I see you get it. That's this one. That's this one for that system. Is that still working? I don't know. I don't get feedback for that one. Talk. Okay, is that still uh, recording? Yeah, Any auto audio? Um, just speak up. Okay. Why don't we come? Well, okay, I'm going to try. We're going to try and do this without uh, mics. Hopefully, if you can't quite hear, let me come down into under range where you can. Okay, so we have these, um, these packages that, that kind of set up for the way the document's going to be. And then and this is the continuum. This, is, this is continues the, the uh, setup. Uh, this first section does drop caps, which is a, lar a large letter at the beginning of a, a chapter. And so you, you kind of set up for the package here. And then we'll have some stuff down at, uh, further down when we actually use it. And then these control to what extent you um, the, the rules for deciding when to, to break off a page. Uh, usually, you know, people talk about widows and orphans, but it's kind of a trade-off between wanting the, the text in the page to always be the same size and not wanting a widow and orphan. So it tries to kind of rain, um, wait how, how badly you don't want the one or the other to happen. Okay, so here's the start of a chapter, and this, um, so we have the, is this working? One, the, okay, is the world sort of, this is back? Yes. That one's good, is it? Okay, thanks. So which one's the one? Oh, it's three. Is that audible? Is that working? No. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Now? Testing.
thing one and two? Okay, great. Let me get the mics again. Little transmitters everywhere here. All right, thanks. Okay, to continue. Okay, so as I mentioned, the um, so here we have you start a chapter by putting it in, in a macro as well, and then this section here tells it about how we're doing the, the drop gap, and then and then that produces um, and then you follow that on with the values showing the the letters that kind of started out and the way it goes. Okay. Another, another little uh, code snippet. So you produce text, and it just kind of goes through and formats it. This is an example of producing a, 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 a figure, a picture, with uh, text going around it. So here, that becomes a wrap figure in the in the text, and then this this option here tells it how how long. If, it, if for some, once in a while, it you know, from time to time, it, it doesn't figure out how long the text picture is correctly, and so you can kind of overwrite it that way. And you can produce a uh, column, and then that tells it how to scale it. And then the include graphics brings in the, the document for the file. And, that, and then you have a caption. You, also, for a caption, you can um, have, a, you have this, this comment in brackets. I, actually, I sort of have one. Oh, I did that, did that down here for the, on the next one. You can have a short version in square brackets and a long version in um, braces. And so that way, if you have something, if you want to have a, a, long, you know, a couple of sentences or something fairly long at the start of the chapter or on a figure, you can do that, but then you don't have to produce the, put the same stuff in your table of contents. So it, it kind of breaks that up. Um, so all right, so that was our caption. So you get the graphics, include the caption, and, um, and that's how it gets your figure into the text. Yes? I've been putting it in the same folder. I don't know if there's a way to give it a path or not. Okay, just um, it also, you also you can break it up and include other parts of the file as well, so you don't have to put it all in one in one big file. So that kind of help, helps that, or you can have uh, different headers for the same and then transfer the same document, for example, fairly easily. Thank you. Okay, and also, but normally they leave the the uh, extension off, and the reason for that is that different which is like a point on, on pulling the file in, is that different versions of the, of the engine for, for setting, it, setting the document take different file formats. And so if you leave that off, you can use the same format, use the same name for different files. So some of them will want to see, uh, you know, like a, a, a JPEG or something like that, and, so, the, you know, and some of them want to see an EPS, if they postcode or something. So if you, use, if you leave the, the name uh, just there, then it, you can, if you have both files, then both engines can use can work with it with the same commands. So that's good. So that helps there. Okay, so that, that gets you the graph figure. This is a plain figure. This is the one where it goes right across the page, as opposed to just having the text go around it. So once again, that, um, it's including a file name. You can actually do some work with the fi file as it's coming in. You can scale it. You can rotate it. You can crop it. And that sort of thing. So if you want to you know, show different parts, you don't have to, to, to cut the file down. Um, however, uh, if you want something more extensive, you can go in with, a, with, with something like GIMP and edit the file by hand to change that. You end up using that quite a bit to change the formats around for the different, uh, to get into the version of one. And then you can put, you put a caption on it. And you say, oh, we have a short form and a long form of the caption. And then you have the figure. These codes up here tell it about where to tr where to try to place the figure? So uh, you try to place it near where it is at the top of the page, bottom of the page. So those letter codes uh, kind of cue it in for that. Okay, so I have conclusion slide. So in a few minutes. So let's do some uh, demos. Well, first, does anybody have any questions? I'm just going to demo some of the tools a little bit. If that works well. We kind of talk through the code. Okay, let's do that for a few minutes and then go to the conclusion slide. Okay, as I mentioned in the in this in the intro, there are a couple of tools. Now you can, as I mentioned, 
these, as stated before, these, these are just text, text files, so you can edit them with any, any editor or any you know, word processing tool or whatever, and you save it out as text, and it's fine. So it's very flexible that way. However, sometimes with the markup, it's not really easy to, uh, to, to do it the first, few, you know, the first few times. And so there are a few tools that, that I want to kind of show that, that um, provide kind of help. So, so you don't have to try to, 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 to compose all the macros from scratch. So for one of them that, that is, this is TextMaker that I'm showing here, um, this, this is a fairly, this is kind of the lighter of, of two of them. There was this one in Kyle that, that I found kind of quite helpful. And so you have various uh, options up here, you know, wizards and things that you can use to, to get, um, insert the uh, dot um, items. Also, this is the, this is the full um, presentation now. So we, like we're experimenting, trying to get the colors and boxes right, and that sort of thing. You get syntax highlighting. And it's also smart enough to know that it doesn't need to spell check use package and that sort of thing. And so that's kind of helpful. This one has um, launches fairly quickly, works on Windows as well as as uh, Linux and the tool other sources, and and um, you can use it to um, as what? It's text maker. just the version that came out. Uh, this is uh, Mernie Fedora here, and it's just the version that came out of the just normal uh, Yum came out with the, pack the uh, other tech packages. So you can kind of, um, so it's, you, get, you get highlighting and you get these uh, wizards that you can kind of tell it, oh, well, I want you to set up. So like, for example, for the slides, you can go in and say, okay, we're doing slides, and then it will put out the first part of the, of the slides and that, kind of, kind of like the, some of the IDEs do for code. So it works very much like that. Then you have search and replace. One thing that's been kind of, one thing I didn't notice is kind of weak in these two, if you're, you're used to using something like you know, Emacs maybe or some of the, the, the industrial weight uh, editors, is they have relatively poor undo. Both this, this, there's a sister one that's Kyle, that's a KDE project as well. That, that and, and sometimes they're, one of them will do something and they kind of trade off strength and weaknesses. Kyle was a little slower. Um, sometimes, so kind of, sometimes I didn't switch back and forth and you'd see them. Uh, but both of them, you get like one level of undo. So you know, if you go back one time, the next time it puts the, it just kind of falls apart. So you have to be a little bit, you might be a little bit aware of that. You can't just, if you're used to, you know, I use Emacs, and if you, you used to be able to undo forever, and that it doesn't work that way. So anyway, so that's that one. And the other one. Let's launch. This one's a little bit. So I forget the second here. So there's a kind of similar, there's similar ideas from different different open source projects, and um, are you coming up. There it comes. I think this is the, this one about takes a second to launch. Okay. Now one one thing that, that you did a little bit. I just we were looking at the. So here we're looking at an older version of the slides. You notice on this one we do have like a, a frame index. Um, TechMaker has that too, but it doesn't show anything for the slides. It doesn't it doesn't understand about slides. But you notice one of the, the issues is that since the macros kind of get built different, you know, the, in the packages people work with, um, you know, contribute the macros and sometimes the, the the formats change and that. So, like for example here, on most of them it doesn't. Recognize it's a little smaller than it was. The monitor's a little smaller. It, it just has the lines on most of them. A few of them on, on some of the slides that I that were further down. It didn't in this one. It, it picked up on it because, depending on how you format it, sometimes it understands 
some versions of the syntax and not others. And so you'll, it'll, depending on which way you format it, um, it may or may not understand, you know, you know, parse it well enough to realize to recognize what's going on. And once again, you kind of have, have wizards. And, and it's kind of an interesting that, that the different, the tools kind of um, produce a little, little bit different stuff. They fold a little differently. And, and the completion, and I, don't, I haven't really, I don't have a good handle. Like I said, sometimes some, I notice that one was working better than the other, and I just switch back and forth. And they, they seem fairly flexible that way. And it would um, just use the one that seems to work the best for the one I'm working on. Okay. Any other qu any questions we got? Yes. I was just wondering if you could show an example of what this would look like when it's rendered. Imagine. Oh, sure. Well, actually, the one this is, this actually is the slide set. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So if we went down here, so actually that's a good point. So if we came here, we'd say yeah. So why the present? So that was the, our first slide. That's our second slide. So and so forth. Although actually, as long as we're here, I'm going to show the book as well. I should have preloaded that one. I said this, this does do version control, although I just did bump the version numbers to just jump, jump the file in. So you could use do version control with it. Okay, so that's an example of a, of a page after it's been rendered. Um, yes? Yeah. Okay, so that's... What? Yeah, so there's the... Yeah, so you have a drop cap there, and so that, that stuff you were demonstrating that produces that. Oh, yes? It's fairly quick. It's it's quick enough that yeah, you just keep doing it. It's not it's not like a compile. Yeah, and some of them, I, oh, that's another topic. Maybe, I haven't used it, but you can in, in some of the combinations do a search back and forth between the rendering rendered version and the, the source. So I have usually just been working with it. But for example, if so, here's the. Let me see which one are we on. So this may throw it, but um, okay. So if we go, so there it is. Now it's doing the rendering and the rendering. Now it's done. Okay, that's for the slides. It's a little bit longer for the for doing the, the book, but it's it's still fairly fairly easy. Also, it's a, if you if you're doing a um, in, in draft mode, it's a lot faster. It doesn't have to render pictures, so that speeds it up a lot. Let's see. We had right, we have some questions back here too. Okay. Uh, in the, uh, the code, uh, I'm just curious on the interface, on how after you make a change, process it, what's the ease of use? Oh, okay. So, let's see. Oh, that's an example right there. That one's simple. Okay, so we'll, we'll add a. So a kind of suggested item. Now it's re rendering and finished and go. And it, since they aren't really coordinated. There it is. So that's the, the changed version. Thank you. Okay. Let's see, we had, you got one. Does that cover, okay, what's your question? I was just going to ask, what type of formats can it output to? Uh, let's see, well, the, the PDFs, the, the, the common one right now, they used to have a. Uh, uh, what? 
I think typically that's the most pop popular now. Uh, there was a DVI that was a, was originally used, and you can get PostScript as well. And um, there are some packages that will do, where I think they render it to HTML uh, instead, so you can, you know, sometimes you, you may want to have a, use a common format and then render that both to have an engine that renders it to, to it makes LaTeX and then goes to the document or goes to independently. Just used, uh, we just get oh, we just gave them the, the one we're doing now. We just turned in the PDF, and I think that's the most common. I don't have a, a large sample uh, sample space, but I but I, I think most they usually set up the PDF. I think that's become the, the common way to do it. Um, if you're publishing in an academic journal, it's really common for them to accept a lot yeah. of source directly. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think for academics also a lot of times they'll have a well, if, if they're a in an area where they do a lot of, where that's kind of standard, a lot of like math or something like that, a lot of times they'll have a set of macros they want you to use, uh, a macro package that fits it, and that way they can get a, you know, you know, this is the way we want ours formatted, here's your macros, and, and away you go. So I think that works, works really well there as well, you know, for that. So that way you can get a consistent uh, appearance through the different articles, and then it looks like somebody different did every one. Can we pick up? Somebody had one back there. Did I get that one? Okay. I got another one. Okay. Um, so I just I just finished uh, creating a text book, for example. Okay. And let's say I, I download this and I start playing with it. I know that's very remedial, but how long do you think it would take for like a 150 page book uh, to typeset it, get it all ready? I don't think it's a six month or well, we took um, what was it, a couple of months, and that was that was along with final editing too. So I um, maybe two three months. Yeah, I, th I think it was. Well, this is sort of a part time thing. I if you're an academic, you maybe more. I mean, you may get to, to do it more concentrated. Um, the initial version worked, worked fairly quickly, and then you know you had a few hours here and there to, to, to kind of clean up things. I think there were a, few, a few couple of cases where there was something that was that took a little fiddling that took a few hours to, to work around. So, I mean, there, there is some learning curve to it, and that's that may be the uh, biggest part of it. But I think we had, on the initial, um, so we initially had the, like on the one that, that I was using as an example that we were looking at, we did, um, we took the, the document. I, I, try, I thought, well, I tried maybe do, seeing if it looked okay in Open Office. That didn't work out too well. So I went to, to Lix. That's kind of like a, a um, kind of a semi front end, semi graphical front end. So you, you can look at it, you can work with it, and kind of see what it is as opposed to doing the macros. I didn't like that as well, and went on to the to LaTeX. I think we had the version initially in a few days, you know, in a few hours after an initial something you could look at, and then it was a matter of kind of working with the, the text itself and you know, kind of details of the way it was rendering for, for a few weeks and making people's changes and that sort of thing. Take a, 
an open office document and, and output it as, as one of its output formats if you download it. If you don't, um, and I think what I it, actually, why did, I didn't, didn't use that one when, when I did the conversion here, but I just went through and, and you know, took the text and just put in the, the, the codes. Um, you know, for, for doing straight text, it's, it goes fairly quickly. Uh, for doing um, tables, it's probably, you know, you would have to insert the markup around it and that sort of thing if you, if you just had a raw, a raw string. So that, you know, that would take some doing, I think. Um, I think I'd look, yeah, look at doing, so you can find, it, find an auto conversion as well. I think I'd look at that. I think it would, yeah. Um, that's, that's, as I mentioned, that's one of the big advantages of the tool is that you don't, it doesn't have to, to keep trying to work with all the time as you're, as you're editing. So, so for a large document, that would be a big advantage for it. Okay. And when, uh, let's see, so, yeah, let's go to the slides back up again a little bit. And also, there, as I mentioned, there are, well, I didn't mention, but, you know, you can use whatever editor. And a lot of the editors do have a, uh, some fairly extensive support, uh, like in Emacs or in, even in Vim, or in addition to these tools where they, they kind of understand the syntax and they have, you know, little tools for putting things out as well. Well, let's see. So those were those. So let's okay. So let's do conclusions in a minute, and then if, if I bring up some more questions, that can cover that a little bit. We can talk about some more. Okay. One of the issues, obviously, free software is you know, it, it reduces the cost and open source as well. But there's still a lot of a lot of um, time cost as well that you have to kind of consider. And, and so in these packages, I um, so you, you you pick a package and you kind of work with it. And there, you know, there's some time investment in, in the packages and that. But I think the, the community has really helped to, to reduce the, kind of help with the cost in, in the sense that by having um, you know, the resources people have worked on and kind of you know, putting stuff into the projects and, and being able to, to do additional documents and you know, documentation and examples that really makes it a lot easier to work with. And um, also uh, projects like uh, tech where you have these various macros, uh, Emacs where, where people can write add-ons to them and that, and, and Eclipse as well, they, they kind of function to, to kind of provide a group of packages that kind of work together or, or you know, development efforts and kind of build a community that can um, make a lot of things uh, work well. And, uh, and I think it's been a real uh, good system, you know, the open source has been a real benefit there. and in the sense that it's been able to, to make it a lot more a lot more viable and uh, you know provide um, good support and a lot of and uh, something so you can contribute back and forth you know contribute and and get benefit back and the whole the whole uh, ecosystem so to speak the the group of packages uh, works well okay so any other questions it looks like I've looked at a lot of the different packages but uh, Docbook seems to be notably missing uh, did you look at that one or I did and I, I I trimmed it down a little bit and took some of those out. Maybe I should have put them, should have left them in. Uh, let's see if we can find that that one. Maybe I can comment on those. I, I looked at DocBook and I looked at um, yeah, my markup bill. So I just did these. Just kind of talked about these. Hopefully, I got all the stuff in. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, yeah, the reason I didn't do DocBook on this one was. Um, that at least looking at the at the way the markup worked, it didn't look like I had the control I wanted of the of the output. So in the case of so I I, I kind of looked at using the I ASCII doc as a markup to go to go to docbook and then and then render on out. And, and the, yeah it was mainly con, kind of control over the details of it. It looked um, for the for the kinds of things we were doing, it didn't Seemed like it quite fit, but it looked like a promising, you know, format for, you know, interesting format. Otherwise, it just didn't sort of fit. So it might it might work better for what you're looking at. We also looked at, also looked at text, text to tags. Um, had the same issue. 
uh, with it. Um, I like the idea of it doing multiple, uh, being able to go to different formats. You're not, um, you can have kind of intermediate format and render it. And um, there's also documents and restructured text, which was, was a little newer. I didn't look at that one really heavily, but I put that one in. Um, originally, I had done a lot of my, back in college, that was before WYSIWYG was, was the end. I had done it in runoff, which I quite liked, in just in terms of uh, just get a document quickly, and you have the NROF, TROF kinds of packages as well. But those didn't seem to be as, as commonly used and didn't really fit here as well. Although possibly, you know, Anyway, so there are there a lot of other options. Another one that um, we're doing, if you're looking at other, other things to look at, uh, in the, at Slug, someone was showing, let's see if I can find that one, uh, was, so I used Lix a little bit uh, on this and decided it really wasn't helping that much. But at the, Rob Oak showed a, an alpha of a newer version last month at Slug, and that looked quite, I think there's quite a bit of improvement there, and that might be something to look at uh, more as that, that comes along. Uh, they had kind of been starting to, originally, uh, uh, Lix was designed as a kind of a graphical editor for, for, for LaTeX, and it was kind of limited toward that, and it's like they're kind of expanding it out so it can, can do other formats and, and making it less dependent, and so, it, so that may kind of make it a little more reversal in that case. Any questions, comments, um, examples, whatever? Okay, well, thank you everybody for your, for your um, attention. Appreciate you coming. Hope it helped. Thank you, Jerome. We appreciate uh, you, sh you coming and sharing your many years of experience with us. Um, we'd also like to thank our room sponsor, which is X Missions, and thank you all for coming to the conference.